Chapter 2 When we got to school the next day, Hillary Kimball was holding court at the door. She's not real, Hillary said. She was sneering. She's an actress. It's a scam. Someone called out, Who's scamming us? The administration, the principal, who else? Who cares? Hillary wagged her head at the absurdity of the question. A hand flashed in the air. Why? School spirit, she spat back. They think this place was too dead or not exciting enough last year. They think if they plant some nutcase in with the students, like they plant narcs in schools, someone else shouted. Hillary glared at the speaker, then continued. Some nutcase who stirs things up. Then maybe all the little students will go to a game once in a while or join a club. Instead of making out in the library, chimed another voice, and everybody laughed, and the bell rang, and we went in. Hillary Kimball's theory spread throughout the school and was widely accepted. You think Hillary's right, Kevin asked me? Stargirl's a plant? I snickered. <laughs> Listen to yourself. He spread his arms. What? This is Micah Area High School, I reminded him. It's not a CIA operation. It's not the U.S. government sending people to watch us. Maybe not, he said, but I hope Hillary's right. Why would you hope that? If she's not a real student, we can't have her on hot seat. Kevin wagged his head and grinned. As usual, Mr. Director, you fail to see the whole picture. We could use the show to expose her. Can't you see it? He did the marquee thing with his hands. Hot seat uncovers a faculty hoax. Teacher's trick. I stared at him. You want her to be a fake, don't you? He grinned ear to ear. Absolutely. Our ratings will go sky high. A lot of people will watch our show. I had to admit, the more I saw of her, the easier it was to believe she was a plant, a joke, anything but real. On that second day, she wore bright red baggy shorts with a bib and shoulder straps. Overall shorts. Her sandy hair was pulled back into twin plated pigtails, each tied with a bright red ribbon. A rogue smudge appled each cheek, and she even dabbed some oversized freckles on her face. She looked like Heidi or Bo Peep. At lunch, she was alone again at her table. As before, when she finished eating, she took up her ukulele. But this time she didn't play. She got up and started walking among the tables. She stared at us. She stared at one face, then another, and another. The kind of bold, I'm looking at you, stare you almost never get from people. Especially strangers. She appeared to be looking for someone. And the whole lunchroom had become very uncomfortable. As she approached our table, I thought, what if she's looking for me? The thought terrified me, so I turned from her. I looked at Kevin. I watched him grin goofily up at her. He wiggled his fingers at her and whispered, Hi, star girl. I didn't hear an answer. I was intensely aware of her passing behind my chair. She stopped two tables away. She was smiling at a pudding-bodied and overweight senior named Alan Fergo. The lunchroom was dead silent. She started strumming the uke and singing. It was happy birthday. When she came to his name, she didn't sing just his first name, but his full name. Happy birthday, dear Alan Furco. Alan Furco's face turned as red as Bo Peep's pigtail ribbons. There was a flurry of whistles and hoots, more for Alan Furco's sake, I think, than hers. People were yelling and whistling to tease Alan Furco, not Stargirl. As Stargirl marched out, I could see Hillary Kimball across the lunchroom rising from her seat, pointing, saying something I could not hear. I'll tell you one thing, Kevin said, as we joined the mob in the hallways. 
She better be fake. I asked him what he meant. I mean, if she's real, she's in big trouble. How long do you think someone who's really like that is going to last around here? Good question. Micah Area High School, M-A-H-S, was not exactly a hotbed of nonconformity. So Micah High School is not a place where people who were different could feel welcome. There were individual variants, or a few people who were a little different, here and there, of course. But within pretty narrow limits, we all wore the same clothes, talked the same way, ate the same food, listened to the same music. Even our dorks and nerds had an M-A-H-S stamp on them. So even the dorks and nerds were like everyone else. If we happened to somehow distinguish ourselves, we quickly snapped back into place, like rubber bands. Kevin was right. It was unthinkable that Stargirl could survive, or at least survive unchanged, among us. But it was also clear that Hillary Kimball was at least half right. This person calling herself Stargirl may or may not have been a faculty plant for school spirit. But whatever she was, she was not real. She couldn't be. Several times in those early weeks of September, she showed up in something outrageous. A 1920s flapper dress. An Indian buckskin. A kimono. One day she wore a denim skirt with green stockings. And crawling up one leg was a parade of enamel, or plastic, ladybug and butterfly pins. Normal for her were long, floor-brushing pioneer dresses and skirts. Every few days in the lunchroom, she serenaded someone new with happy birthday. I was glad my birthday was in the summer. In the hallway, she said hello to perfect strangers. The seniors couldn't believe it. They had never seen a 10th grader so bold. In class, she was always flapping her hand in the air, asking questions, though the question often had nothing to do with the subject. One day, she asked a question about trolls, fictional creatures or little monsters, in U.S. history class. She made up a song about isosceles triangles. She sang it to her plain geometry class. It was called, Three Sides Have I, But Only Two Are Equal. She joined the cross-country team. Our home meets were held on the Micah Country Club golf course. Red flag showed the runners the way to go. In her first meet, out in the middle of the course, she turned left when everyone else turned right. They waited for her at the finish line. She never showed up. She was dismissed from the team. One day, a girl screamed in the hallway. She had seen a tiny brown face pop up from Stargirl's sunflower canvas bag. It was her pet rat. It rode to school in the bag every day. One morning, we had a rare rainfall. It came during her gym class. The teacher told everyone to come in. On the way to the next class, they looked out the windows. Stargirl was still outside, in the rain, dancing. We wanted to define her, to wrap her up as we did each other. We wanted to decide who she was or to understand her. But we could not seem to get past weird and strange and goofy. Her ways knocked us off balance. The things she did confused us. A single word seemed to hover in the cloudless sky over the school. Huh? Everything she did seemed to echo Hillary Kimball. Stargirl's actions seemed to agree with what Hillary Kimball said. She's not real. She's not real. And each night in bed, I thought of her as the moon came through my window. I could have lowered my shade to make it darker and easier to sleep, but I never did. In that moonlit hour, I acquired a sense of the otherness of things. At night, I was able to see things in a different way. I 
liked the feeling the moonlight gave me. As if it wasn't the opposite of day, but its underside, its private side. When the fabulous poured on my snow-white sheet like some dark cat come in from the desert. It was during one of these night moon times that it came to me that I realized that Hillary Kimball was wrong. Stargirl was real.